than something he can actually carry with. Uh, we'll see what they give him in game number two. SK Telecom versus GE Tigers. Welcome to Picks and Bands in game two of our season finals here on OGN. All right, so same bands as last game so far. LeBlanc for SK Telecom. Lulu for the GE Tigers. Rek'Sai will be banned out once more by SKT. Don't want to first pick that one. Happy with Tom's performance on that Sejuani. And his skill shot Agreed. accuracy on Sejuani has been very impressive throughout his very short tenure here. Yeah, I mean, mechanically, decision-making wise, he's been very, very solid. I'm really excited to see what this kid can do, you know, as his career develops, because he's already got such a strong start going forward. Yeah, he did get a little bit of exposed in the CJ games. Yeah, it could you, happen again. You gotta expect that to happen with a new jungler, though. I mean, that's you, you expect that to happen pretty much every game with a new jungler. This is very interesting. Cassidy here is going to be a ban. This is not a champion that we've seen a lot in Korea. Yes, we've seen it many times in China, particularly in the LPL, and it's popped up in the LCS as well. Oh, but it hasn't been year. a big pick here in Korea. Kalista, of course, banned out. Urgot available, but I feel at this point it's almost a bait for the GE Tigers. Uh, they're going to take away uh, Sivir and Sejuani. That means Tom's going to get Nunu, though, and I don't think he's going to feel uncomfortable uh, at all with that. What do you think about this first pick is here? I mean, we know these guys have been playing it a lot in solo queue. Is it really first pick worthy? Well, it's it's very interesting how much practice all the mid laners in this match, Easy Hoon, Faker, and Koro, have been putting onto that champion recently. Yeah. They want to put Koro on something that he's not going to be comfortable playing. The Koro long, long ago started playing some of these zone control mids. If we think about Kuro historically, for the last few years, he's been an Oriana player. He's been a Syndra player. Ziggs player. Ziggs player. Yep. So Azir really fits into his wheelhouse in that way. And why not get him on something that makes him less comfortable? Because he did go pretty even in lane with Easy Hoon in the last game. And they're going to take the Nunu for the synergy as well. And the Nar, grabbed by Marin again, had a great game on it last time. Why not try and repeat that performance? Please don't play Aurelia. Oh, wow, I don't know. It's a best of five, but do you really want to take that li that risk two games in a row? And we may see that cannon. I wonder if it's going to be a support or a top cannon if they lock it in. Uh, typically, it has Can't been it. a top cannon when we've seen it. All right, well, there's the Aurelia again for Smeb, too. He wants this matchup again. He obviously feels that he just misplayed it last time. Yep. And he's going to have better kill pressure with the Sejuani than he would with the Nudu, but he's gonna have to do more work because I mean, his tower just got chipped out. He couldn't get a CS lead. He couldn't get any more kills beyond that first blood. And yeah, if we're talking about kill pressure, he got first blood, like what more does he want, you know? And you have to be able to snowball that. You have to yeah. be able to do something. And instead with that first blood gold, all he did was lose his tower and TP late into the team fights and not have anywhere near as much of an effect as this Nar. so. I think Smeb just maybe thinks he misplayed it or something like that. That's the only it's the only thing I can imagine in this situation, grabbing that same matchup two times in a row when it yeah. couldn't really have gone better for him in that first game. Well, maybe Alistar here for Wolf. It will be Bang locking in that Corky as well. The champion we haven't seen quite as much in the tank meta. Corky champion we haven't seen in, yeah, like you're saying, quite a while actually. And not Three one that, twice. that benefits so much from that blood boil. Wolf on the Alistair again. And now will we see Gorilla's Annie here for some more engage? This would set them up with some better pick potential with the Aurelia than they had in the last game. Yeah. But still, not anywhere near as tanky as SKT's composition. Thresh would serve the same purpose as Annie. And maybe a Thresh. Locked in for Gorilla would be a pretty solid pickup as well. Alistair is going to be very difficult to deal with, though, because he is going to be able to break the CC on the Cassiopeia ult and really start messing with the relatively short-range carries of Cassiopeia and Sivir on the GE Tigers composition. Yeah. Meanwhile, SKT again selecting a team composition with a high amount of tankiness, some fantastic siege with SKT. Azir and Corky grouping after a couple core items could really help them get some towers down quickly. If it comes to team fighting, it really looks like they're gonna be relying on Easy Hoon as well for the damage this time around. I mean, if he gets taken out, you've got a Corky instead of a Sivir. Might get a little bit more dicey this time, but we'll see how they do. And the big question mark is this Aurelia in the top side. Yeah. Didn't work at all last game. Even with that first blood gold, can it be turned around somehow by Smeb and Lee in this next one? Yes, they've got a different jungler, 
in that Szechuani, so they should have a little bit better than the time, but I just don't think Irelia is that strong of a pick. I mean, we saw how well Marin did after the first blood. You know, now if he plays it a bit safer, he's going to be able to start doing that right away. Yeah, we see the Hecarim still available. We see the Shivana still available. This is a very different top lane dynamic than we saw in the CJ versus SKT series. Yeah, so uh, mid laners swapping champions for game number two. Kuro on that Cassiopeia now, Iziun on the Azir. And again, you know, kind of a surprising pickup with Corky for Bang. I mean, obviously great siege with that Azir, but they're going to need to get something done early. They absolutely will. Alistair, a bit of a wacky pick coming in here. Don't see too much of that, but we'll see right. what Wolf can do. It's time to get into game number two, guys. Let's do it. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. GE Tigers vs. SK Telecom, and we see GE moving as a unit down to the bottom here. Bang's going to spot one of them, at least. Now we're going to spot all of them. <laughs> Boss bomb into the tri brush, but it looks yep. like GE trying to get some deep wards in right here with the Alistair Corky lane against Siver Thresh. It wouldn't surprise me for SKT to really want to lane swap here in this position uh, so you don't eat so much of that harass early on we've seen most quirky players here in korea want to swap out of the Siver matchup generally speaking and then once you hit six then you can move back into that lane and you've got a little bit more trading power with your rockets well skt using that opportunity after seeing ge down in their bottom jungle to get some nice deep wards up in top yep. so they'll be able to get a lot of info about that possible lane swap if they want it Pretty typical counter warding strategy right there. Yep. Doesn't look like there's going to be a lane swap though, unless people start moving right now. Just holding on. Yeah. Thresh actually going into lane to see if he needs to freeze the minion wave. He can get in trouble right here actually. Okay, they're gonna ping him. Yep. So no lane swap needed. In fact, no Gromp taken. And GE knows from those wards that there won't be Krugs taken on the other side. And that'll be no early experience for either duo lane. Yeah, and we get lanes. a standard game again this time around. And well, Marin did. Same matchup, same items. Doran Shield first for Marin. Tom. Well, if this really doesn't work out this time, I think it's going to be the last time we see it in the series. All right, so Tom, uh, since the Sivir was late to lane, Tom knew that there had been a leash on the bottom side. So he reacts by going immediately from Grom to red. Yeah, they might and be able to triple buff this. Yeah, stealing that one away. He'll probably path right to his own red buff afterwards and try and deal with the Sejuani. Tom. Oh, Lee's going to be so sad. He's going to be All right, seen time on this to take the red buff. Oh. Where'd he go? Oh, oh, he actually went around and then back down into the river. So Lee knows that it's been taken, but that's another little bit of extra pressure that Marin doesn't have to worry about. Not having that red buff, which did lead to his first blood up in the top side that time and look this time around they've actually adapted their jungle pathing so remember how marin died in the last game uh tom took the crab on the bottom side of the map instead of the top side and marin didn't drink it ward and he had no crab yeah this time they've adapted they've got the crab there so he has a little bit extra protection from behind so they've already sk telecom has Learn, oh boy. They've really learned from their mistakes. Now, will they make them again? <laughs> Marin has a ward in his inventory right now. I was going to say, has he learned? Has he really? Getting slowed down in a little bit of trouble here. There's the hop. Much better hop this time around. He had the minion wave, but again, that was a bit of a uh, scary situation for Marin. Uh, the difference is, is that we didn't see Lee able to go around necessarily as much as he could, but Marin plays a little better. Tom is going to respond with a solo dragon. We've seen this, this is so risky. many times. He doesn't have pressure in the bottom side. Yeah, but nobody seems to realize he's doing this. There's no warding that tells GE it's going on. All they know is oh, they haven't man. seen it for a while. No, they're, they're figuring it out right now. Yeah, are they figuring it out in time, though? There's a ward coming in. Looks like they're going to fight over it. Wolf trying to zone out Prey. Bang doing a little bit of damage, and they have to get him out on the lantern. Looks like SKT will be able to take this first dragon after all at four minutes. Yeah, Tom doesn't wow. even have a point in E yet. Huh. Went 
two points in consume, one point into blood boil after seeing what was going on in topside, specifically so he could make that play. Now, did it leave him defenseless? Absolutely, but Bang and Wolf were there. Yep. They had pressure in mid, and Bang and Wolf got into the river and were able to zone. So nicely done by them. But that's Tom is a bit of a risk taker, and that's what we see right there. If he gets into a fight at that dragon with no points in snowball, it could have been disastrous. Hey, as long as it pays off though, and I guess it did that time. Interesting stuff. Meanwhile, Lee coming down in bot lane. Looks like we may have a play there. There's a flash play. Valkyrie immediately, they bring him in with the lantern. Nice pulverize from Wolf. Great disengage from SK Telecom. Bang and Wolf really not in much danger at all there. And GE kind of screwing up the setup on that one, grouping for a pretty easy pull from Wolf, honestly. Now they're going to try and dive this, considering how low Bang is. Yeah. Tom is here. He's four. He should have his E now. Oh, you would think so, right? He's got the double buffs as well, whereas Lee with no buffs right now. Yeah, does have the snowball, so they're not actually yep. going to be able to... Ooh, Ooh bang. you got to be careful, buddy. This matchup can be a bit tricky for Corky early on, but SKT committing to this strategy of early dragons one more time, and it seems like whenever Tom wants these early dragons against Lee, he just kind of gets them, and Lee again, just playing top side of the map. They know what GE wants to do here. Right. They know they want to snowball the Aurelia because that's the only way this Aurelia is going to be relevant come the mid and late game. And they get Instead, that she's advantage. been Aurelia Vint. <laughs> yes. Oh. You make me sad. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to look better from here on out. No, I can't make that promise, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. All my people call your people, you know. I'm just trying to understand what GE's thought process is around this pickup because it really must be, I mean, one of two things. You know, Nofe really believing in it or Smeb really believing in it. But here's the other aspect of this, Doa, is when we look at what the pressure situation turned out to be in their last games in the final matchup for each team in the regular season, it was so much about Tom playing around the early dragon of and course, Lee yeah. wanting to gank in the top side. And that caused huge, huge problems for them because Lee just couldn't get what he wanted done. And if I'm GE coming into this match, I'm expecting, as we see this ward here, and Lee not going to be able to do much of anything. Hey, what do you know? Wolf's Ward's gorilla's help. here, too. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. All right, well, Marin decides to stick around anyway. There we go. Marin in a little bit of trouble. There's a play. There's a flash. Hops out, actually makes it. Man, Marin just dancing on a razor's edge, though, but he's not giving up first blood this time. And Lee doesn't have level six yet. Look at the farm again. Yeah. 27 to 19. Lee's been on the warpath a bit, trying to gank here. Meanwhile, Tom has just thoroughly warded the bottom side jungle and is taking his ground. So Lee wants to get some wolves right here, but Prey's all by himself on the bottom side. You know, does get shoved back a little bit. And here we see the TP coming in. So as I was saying, if I'm GE and I see what happened and Tom's preference for that bottom side in the early Dragons in the last game, I'm not sure I give Smeb a champion that really needs to be snowballed out of the top side because your jungler is basically just sacrificing Dragons at that point for a gank that may or may not work. Right. If you have Lee Sin, if you're going to play that way, you might as well all in on it, honestly, and play Lee Sin or something like that that can really do a lot of damage well, to gank effectively. That's the confusing thing with Lee right now is because he's picking meta champions, but he's not playing them in the meta style. He's still trying to play them like Lee Sin, like Jarvan, and it's just not working. Yeah. I mean, I don't agree with picking Lee Sin either. I just think that if you want to play this way, go 100% all out in this fashion. That's right. Pick the Rengar, pick the Lee Sin. Pick the, uh, pick the jungle twitch. Go all out. <laughs> that's what Monty's telling you to do, is pick jungle twitch. Um, my words exactly. Yep, I'm pretty sure that's what you meant to say. Well, in the, mean in the meanwhile, Easy Hoon doing what Easy Hoon does, continuing to farm up very safely. This is a reverse matchup of the last time, except Kuro decided to go for the ghost rather than the ignite, which probably a better decision overall. <laughs> Get yeah. that positioning during the team fights. Not a big fan of Ignite Cassiopeia. You have enough damage as it is, and just play safe and farm up as best you can. You never have enough damage, Monte Cristo. Should know this. <laughs> Ignite Victor. That's the way to go. Nope, not this patch, Doa. That yep. one's disabled. <laughs> he is. It's true. Oh, well, from Marin, but uh, Marin taking a lot of damage in response. 
He's got plenty of wards now, not that he really uses them, but he manages to hop out anyway. I, Sveb is really gonna have to make an impressive teleport play here, I think, to be relevant in this game. It's certainly looking like that, but you know, when you say that, then you look at Bang and Wolf, and they're playing back a little bit in lane, they're playing safe, they know there's no dragon for another, you know, 40, 35 seconds, and they don't need to really expose themselves to any danger. Oh. That they're clearing the raptors immediately beforehand so that there's no raptor buff to clear wards actually hmm. from SKT. Not a bad idea. Smash still shoved into his turret right here. Now, importantly, he actually has won the CS battle this game, farming under his turret. Of course, Aurelia is excellent at that, especially once you get the sheen and can proc it off of the blade surge. We had that lead early on last game too, and we saw Marin able to turn that one around. Now, what Marin won't have though, potentially for this next dragon fight, is Meganar. One second till it comes up, but Brain Gorilla just not able to do very much right here. Nice dodge on the boomerang blade. Yep. And with that level six now, Bang is gonna feel a lot more comfortable in lane. Now Prey has no mana right now, so a bit shaky. Huh. In terms of if he can actually fight around Dragon right now, looks like Lee wants to take the Scuttle Crab. No immediate movement. There's a lot of vision for both teams around it right now, though. So well, there we go. Lee deciding to grab that Scuttle Crab. Yeah. Oh, meanwhile, a lot of damage on the break gets exhausted as well too, and poking them out right before a Dragon attempt certainly will help. Yeah, but uh, they can't really clear at the moment. Is the thing They're, oh, they boy. may they try and go it. for it anyway. They, they do have the wave in the mid lane. They've got the teleport as well. If they want to use it, Smeb does not have his. Wolf gets grabbed by that death sentence. There's the snowball on the lead. Well, Mar doesn't have TP quite now. yet. It's going to come up about two seconds. Ah, okay, yep. But this is a very small timing oh, window. Boy, Prey is not there. Are they going to come in and try to get it, Lee? Thinking about it, Curl comes in from behind. They bring an easy oot. Oh, dragon taken by Tom. SKT gets it. They're going to turn onto Curl right away. Nice ult from Tom. Although Curl turns around to catch his ult as well. Here comes the teleport. Bang fleeing from the fight right now. SKT a bit fractured at the moment, and they may get Wolf here. No, first blood goes to Easy Hoon. They're going to chase Gorilla as well. Prey got taken down, and now they can turn on to Lee. This one may not be quite over yet. SKT. Looking for another kill or two. And they're gonna go in on a snap. That's a lot of damage. There's Meganar. Oh, the flash. They couldn't quite catch him with the he ultimate. He flashed the gnarled that right there. That was pretty impressive by Smeb to get out of that one. Uh, very, very close fight. One for one in the end, but second drag going over to SK Telecom. Now, first blood as well. They managed to get Wolf down in the end, but it was a pretty desperate chase from the GE Tigers at the end of that fight. Prey goes down. He's behind in CS now. And he's going to lose some more minions onto his bottom turret. They want to make a play here onto Easy Hoon, but well, Easy Hoon's playing See, he still has his ult up, so. Yep, and he's got his flash. I don't think you're going to be catching this as here. And neither does GE. SK Telecom just simply playing around these objectives quite a bit better than GE right now. It's amazing to me, too, because GE is the team that has been incredibly solid in picks and bans this entire season, and to come out with this Aurelia at this time is is quite unlike them. Yeah. They've been at the vanguard in terms of setting the meta, I would say, well, at least pre Cinderhulk patches, I would say that that crown went over to SK Telecom and CJ once Cinderhulk came out. Well, 5.5 is really where everything did start to kind of fall apart for the GE Tigers, and you know, Lee especially, but yeah, this Aurelia pick is a bit puzzling. GE coming down the river now. Just want to clear out some wards. I mean, their jungle has been repeatedly, their bottom side has been repeatedly heavily warded by SKT. Yep. Wow, nice poke on the Kuro, geez. Look at that damage. I think SKT just has a fantastic read on how GE wants to play these games. Oh, grab on the bank is pulled right into the box there. Can they possibly save him? Tom and Wolf are there as well, so no follow-up onto that ultimate from Gorilla. Nothing they can do. Blue buff is stolen by yep. Tom in this instance. And now Easy Hoon is Whoa. going to solo kill. Whoa! Wow. We need to replay that one. Wow, oh, are, are we that sure is... that's Easy Hoon in the booth there? Oh, yep, it's Easy Hoon. That almost never happens no, with Easy kidding. Hoon. Camper says Easy Hoon, but the game's saying Faker right now. 
What a play. Let's we have well, he to see still that had one. his ultimate up. He knew that there were the summoners were down. Oh, Meanwhile, a dive on the bot lane. Girl in a little bit of trouble. Wolf having to back away. It's a lot of damage. Bang. One more rocket may do it. Here, Here comes Easy Hoon. He's coming back in. Rename this guy Faker Hoon now, man. He's coming in. He wants to do damage. Oh. He'll just poke Prey out. Why not? Great zone play on that dive. Prey just had Jeez. nowhere to go, and Easy Hoon. Showing up in the bottom side, picking Hitting. up another kill. All of a sudden, three kills at 14 minutes for Easy Hood in this game. Smeb is finding himself under his turret, chunked nearly to one third right now again. Oh, it's a dive. Smeb trying to get away with that, but they're just going to take down the turret and then deal with the Zarelia. There's the chilling smite. They're going to slow him down. There's the stun. Smeb trying to fight for his life, but I think he's in trouble. Nice ultimate coming in from top. Boom goes. The ice dynamite, I guess you could say. A kill for Marin. And Lee continuing to just be in huge trouble this match. SK Telecom really starting to run away with this one already. Uh, again, they know where to apply the pressure. Now, how did this go down? Kuro looks pretty safe on his jury. He bent it afterwards, so saw that opportunity. Used the E onto his soldier and then yep. moved it right at the end. So pretty easy play actually. Just knowing. So well, Wolf's gonna get taken down here. It looks like. Oh, knocking away. Sejuani, can he make it out? Heels. Can he get over the wall? He doesn't even have flash. This cow. Oh, brings him deep into the jungle. What is this gonna cost him? A lot of damage onto their mid lane turret. Now that delay because they were trying to give it to Kuro did cost them some damage on mid. Now it wasn't so much the mechanics of that Azir play that were impressive, Doa. It was the fact that this warding on the bottom side enabled it to happen. It because the fact that Easy Hoon was the one who was doing it. That's, <laughs> that's, true. The, that's the part that made me say, wow. Yeah, it's just that he was willing to make that play because they had total vision over one half of the jungle. Yeah. And so he had the necessary information and the knowledge of his current level of power to just go for it. Well as Kuro. Oh, Easy Hoon might be in a little bit of trouble now, though. Here comes Kuro to the wall. Easy Hoon pushes him away with that ultimate. Oh, man, but it's a 4v1 flashing. Can he make it out? Death sentence. Oh, but he manages to cleanse. It doesn't matter. Kuro gets the kill anyway. Probably oh. actually shouldn't have cleansed that and given the kill over to Gorilla if possible. But I agree. Even so, finds himself in a bit of a dicey situation, gets collapsed on by the support and the jungle of the enemy team. Well, that's a couple picks now for the GE Tigers. SK Telecom does need to kind of play a little bit more safely here, maybe. Yeah, but they have the Trinity Force power spike onto Corky. They're sieging the mid lane turret, dragging up in 25 seconds. Easy Hoon will be able to get up by that time. Oh, yeah. And it's this Nar versus this Aurelia. What are you going to do? Baron already has the Randwood's open here. And Prey, still no Infinity yet. She's still looking for that first core item still going to be a very difficult fight for GE to win in spite of that kill. Well, the vision kind of on both sides at the moment, although the Rift Scuttler is going over to SK Telecom's side right now. Marin still doing tons of damage. There's just nobody to stop him. Look at that. Already doing about a fourth of the health to that Tier 2 turret. Marin's <laughs> been insane on, on Dar today. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. GE really wants this dragon. They've given up a lot to get this positioning in terms of damage on the top lane turret. They can't get this. They're in quite a bit of trouble. And the scary thing, too, is SKT has a substantial lead at this point of time. And if you're GE, you know that odds are in game three, Faker's coming in. I think so, It's too, not going to be easier. Yeah. yeah, I think if uh, SKT has a chance to 3-0, they're going to bring in Faker. They're going to bring in Bengi. You don't want to go down 0-2 to SK Telecom. GE starts that dragon. SK Telecom close by. Are they going to try it? There's a box defensively. Teleports coming in. Meg, so doing okay. Whoa, Easy Hoon manages to steal the dragon. And now SKT going for the fight over the wall. He comes. A kill for Easy Hoon as well. SK Telecom, can they finish this one up? Smeg going deep. Making a double for Easy Hoon. And Kuro on the run. Gorilla and Prey on the run as well. Will it be a kill for Bang? Maybe, but it doesn't matter. They got what they came for. Man, watching Easy Hoon this game is when you find out the local librarian is actually a secret agent. <laughs> that wow. is insane. Efficient and deadly. No kidding. He can <laughs> sort the books and sort out the bodies. <laughs> well, um, not really sure what's going on with Lee's ability to smite today. It really <laughs> has not been awesome. That's true. Oh, goodbye, Gorilla. And Kuro, Kuro flashes. 
knocked away. Is it going to be another kill? Yes. Tom picks that one up as well. Marin in a little bit of trouble. He's about to become Meganar, though. No problem at all. He'll be able to make it out. And SK Telecom really springing out to a huge lead in this one. It's 5,000 gold now. Dragons at sub 20 minutes. Crazy. GE has Crazy. not had an ounce of control in this game. In this series, you mean? Yeah, really, in this series. Yeah, well, they may They're trying to play around here. the top lane, but it just isn't working at all. As Aurelia is not doing anything. Wow, Easy Hoon, seven out of eight. Kill contribution this game as well. Six, one, and one. Yeah, take Bakery. a look at this fight again here. See the TP coming in and huh. just what do you do? two HP. One auto attack from the Sand Soldier clears it out, and Lee is just standing there right next to that Sand Soldier. Does die. Smed tries to get on Easy Hoon. He gets ejected from the Dragon Pit by the Emperor's Divide. And then it's just cleanup as Bang moves forward, forces a flash out of play. He's got no mana to finish that kill off. Yeah, they'll be. Again, you know, pretty satisfied with what they got so far. And we might see a pretty easy Baron as well. Look at this, they're just gonna knock down mid turret or come close to it. They've played out the siege aspect of this so yeah, well. They're too. in a massive power spike as well with this yep. composition, so it's really gonna be quite nice for them in terms of sieging. Obviously, Marin is very strong at the moment as well, perfectly capable of dealing with this Aurelia considering that He's building into a second item of thorn mail at the moment, it would appear. Yeah, you know, all of this has given way to pretty massive CS leads in uh, middle and, uh, well, not middle, in AD carry and jungle as well, too. And top. Really everywhere. Yeah, pretty much everywhere except mid. You but easy has got, got six kills. He's too, he's not, uh, you know, he doesn't have time to kill minions. He's too busy killing players this game. It's one of the most aggressive easy hoon games we've ever seen. Last time Prey played this Sivir too, it was against Najin, and that was a game, that was a couple of games that GE just crushed. They yeah. looked so prepared and so aggressive in the early game, but we're just not seeing it here today. Another turret goes down, that is all three outer turrets in favor of SK Telecom T1. And easy, just look at all the pressure this guy is putting on, man. So oh much my. damage. His Talk about a one-man army. Yeah, his choke control, too. His control over his zones in this game has just been so fun to watch. Yeah. It's a pretty next level Azir here. And they're just going to keep pushing, man. They've got the uh, Azir turret as well. Wow. There's nothing they can do. Really? Oh, well, they can try to flank. They really and Lee want to give it a shot, but it looks like they'll pull back. And this is one of those great things about Azir is that if you get an early advantage, you can just pop this tower right here and just poke so hard, continue putting a ridiculous amount of pressure on with nearly no way to stop you. Yep. Well, SK Telecom just kind of biding their time until the next dragon comes up, and it's only about two minutes away now. It's, it would be their fourth it's already. It's crazy to think that they had this many dragons early, but yeah. credit to Tom for reading that situation and going for that early dragon, choosing to put the, the first two points in consume, and then Bang and Wolf are protecting him. It allowed them to get that early lead and then fight at every dragon after that and continue to just push this game forward. That early dragon decision by Tom accelerated the pace of this game so much. And what do you do if you're Smeb? Just nothing at this point. Didn't work game one, worked even worse in game number two without that first blood. I think it's time for a new top lane pick. Smith is one of the players with one of the largest oh. champion pools. Hey, there's Faker. What in the world? That's something you don't see every day. <laughs> All right, well, Baron activated by SK Telecom. They're going to back away. Faker mulling over his Chinese retirement plans. <laughs> <laughs> That's KTL. Just keep pushing this mid lane forward. You know, we have a bunch of uh, former Korean scene players here tonight in yeah, Mata, Acorn. Uh, pretty much all the old Samsung guys here. Yeah, they're all back in Korea yeah. after the LPL Welcome finals. Back. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's, uh, he's checking out, talking to them, seeing uh, seeing what his options are, maybe. <laughs> SK Telecom doesn't need me anymore. <laughs> Can't wait to see uh, EDG at, at MSI here in this, this next week. 
Yeah, it'll be fun to see all 10 Koreans that are going to that event. Yeah. Can't wait to be at MSI <laughs> next week. That's going to be fun. Tallahassee, baby. <laughs> all right, SKT backing away as GE tries to make some moves on this dragon. Jeez. Whoa, Prey. I think he said one to get out of that one. Well, <laughs> from downtown. <laughs> Up there's dragon number four, totally yep. uncontested Ain't here. No thing, man. And look at that, four pink wards on top side as well. There's no chance that GE can even get into the Baron bit. They can transition immediately into a Baron bait after this. Jeez. If they want to. Great vision control. This is this is pretty disgusting at this point, man. GE Tiger is just not able to really make any headway. Bard's just gonna TP out. Can he? Yep. He's not gonna be able to. Oh, oh. It's out. He made it. Very close. Wow. <laughs> oh, meanwhile, let's just take the mid lane turret too while we're at it. Why not? Hey, why stop there? Let's get the bottom lane tier two as well. G's doing that thing again where they start to lose and then they just only gank top lane. Yeah. Oh, well, as they plan SKT, but no follow up there. Easy to back away. Here comes the damage. The box has been put down. Meanwhile, some zoning. Top trying to get out as well. Wolf doing what he can. He will go down. There's a kill for Smeb. Another kill goes on to Frey. Meanwhile, he's even in a little bit of trouble here. Smeb comes in with the stun. Empress does divide. Forces him back. Smeb gets blown up by Bang. Easy unit. Bang, the dynamic damage duo. Backing out in the bot lane now. Well, GE knows what they need to do. They have to go after some picks right now and try and turn couple. things around with this Aurelia, but. It's too late. It's another instance where G does the right thing, but it's too late. And right as we see, Lee goes in here. Wolf immediately pops his ultimate. They get the flash out of Easy Hood. So they have this 3v3, but then Burrow gets lanterned in. They're able to just deal the damage necessary. Bang has no mana right here. Marin has no rage. And he has no TP. Look dangerous for Easy Hood for the second there until that ult came out. Do take down Smeb in the end, but uh, Prey's really just not doing much damage this game, it seems like, too. And GE getting the skirmishes they want. They don't want those full 5v5s, they want 3v3s, and SKG is going to go for it right wow, now. Wow, and that not? Baron is going to go down so fast. Look at that gorilla. All he can do is just watch and be sad as SK Telecom takes an easy Baron. Four dragons, a Baron, five turrets to one. And it's only 26 minutes in the game, guys. You know, I thought this final would be 3-1 in favor of SK Telecom, but this is much more decisive yeah, I, I than really, I would have imagined. I mean, we both kind of assumed, all right, maybe they'll try Tom and Yuzu in game one, they'll lose, then they'll bring in Bengi and Baker, then we'll see the real series begin. But man, the real series began in game number one, and Tom and Yuzu and seem very much up to the challenge here in the grand finals. Certainly do. Well, here we go, another tower. Goes down 27 minutes into this game. Just when you think this SK Telecom team can't get any scarier, now they're having games like this in the finals with their subs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And so, more pressure just on all, all three lanes. Well, two of the three lanes anyway. Why not? You have split push advantage. You yeah. have a Baron buff. Well, that wave down and the bot lane is going to be pushing soon too. There you go, Marin. Autoing it using that range one more time and making GE dance from top to mid over and over and over again. But that yeah. Azir Tower is just so difficult to deal with because you can't walk up to kill the cannon minion at that point. Yeah, that's true. It's really an effective sieging strategy once you have that Baron buff. And I am just completely blown away by how these games have gone, how well SK Telecom has looked. That's her taking a lot of damage. Wow, easy. Oh, he's got Luna's Echo. So hard. Oh, he's got <laughs> Echo on too. He is here now. The poke is pretty crazy. Yep. Well, these turrets are going to fall very, very soon. They're going to just rotate up the top. Take that one. Here we go. GE trying to come in. Bank. Valkyrie's way gets caught by the Elk from Cesuati. Frey looking for an opportunity to do damage. Spent goes down immediately. There's a Naro. Knocks him right out of the box. And the kills come in for SK Telecom. Frey in big trouble. There's another kill for Easy Hoon before he goes down. The inhibitor's not going to last long. They're going to take it and leisurely stroll away. Into the mid lane. They're going to leisurely stroll to victory here in game number two. Easy hoon, easy life, guys. Yeah, I don't know if they can 
finish right now with the I set think, timer so low, but they may be able to take Barrett. one Nexus inhibitor, or one Nexus turret rather. Not having easy room really does make a difference, doesn't it? Kuro up in 10 seconds, I think they can do it. They're going for it. Lee trying for his life to defend Smeb coming back up. Here we go, the Nexus under attack. Kuro, Smeb trying to save it. Knocked away by Wolf. There goes the Nexus. SK Telecom with the subs up 2-0 in the grand finals, I can't believe it. Well, you see who's been playing great. Had a little bit of a mistake in the mid lane right there, did get picked off, but other than that, he's really showed up. Well, on Azir and Cassiopeia, these yeah. are champions that he's been, I mean, Azir is new for him, but the Cassiopeia he's been great on so far this season. Well, GE had the pose at the start of this one, but SKT should make them look like posers, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, you gotta say it. You gotta wonder. What's going to happen in this top lane? And it yeah. really, GE just needs to read what Tom is doing and SK Telecom's goals better. Just put put Smeb on a tank that he can teleport in with and try at least fight over some of these dragons in the bottom side instead of just giving him up. And the thing is, it's not getting any easier from here, right? I think now is the time we see Bengi come in. Now is the time we see Baker come into the mid lane. You can't deny the fans Faker. If there's a chance they're going to 3-0, I think, I think you put him in. I think they'll keep Tom and put Faker in. That's what I think they're going to do. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, sure. Tom really seems to have Lee's number in this game. I hope they put Bengi in, though. He played so well in their match against CJ. He deserves a game in the finals. Well, I am. We'll see <laughs> what SK Telecom and Coma right there, their coach, decides to do. Yep. He's very animated right now, waving his pen around. Yep. Well, SK Telecom up 2-0 here in the Champion Spring Grand Finals. When we come back, we will see if they can make it a 3-0 and punch their tickets to the Mid-Season Invitational and hoist that Spring Trophy. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back with maybe the last game of the night here on Champions Korea. Don't go anywhere.